Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex, and today I want to take a renewed look at uh, Victorious, the character that I'm playing right now, uh, because I was able to build her up just a little bit more, uh, and I was specifically able to get to her ABX day, which is the one I'm playing right now, and so I wanted to highlight uh, some of the feats that the character can do, uh, so that you can know, because you have to build her up to, five, to six stars anyways, or five stars to complete the epic quest, for Mr. Fantastic, and then you're going to need to get her to Tier 2 if you want to unlock Dr. Doom. So it's best to know what she can do, and it's also pretty cool to see a character uh, do relatively well when she only has 4 skills instead of the, the usual 5, right? So uh, I thought I would do that for you guys. I'm, ooh, I just I, I kind of goofed this up, but you can see my best score in the top uh, right-hand corner. So ignore whatever score I'm getting right now. This is obviously uh, a pretty bad take just at the moment because I've kind of distracted myself, but we're going to try to uh, get something fixed here. That's a little bit better. That was way too early, though. All right, we're going to have to try to line this up. The, the basic premise of what I'm doing is, uh, well, I'm goofing it up now, but you proc right there when she jumps up. Boom. Well, it didn't work there. You proc on the uh, second skill. You're supposed to do four before that. You do the second skill again, you do the third skill, and then as soon as she jumps up, you do the second skill again, and it should proc your obelisk four into two. You actually get the two skill in three times for every proc, which is actually really cool. Uh, she has a very, very short cooldown on her uh, second skill. It's only three seconds, and because of the iframe, you can spam it a lot. Uh, it'll feel like you're spamming it pretty much every other uh, skill that you do. So that's one of the things you'll get used to and it's a pretty simple character once you get that down. Um, but she has a, a lot of interesting features that make her potentially very good for the future um, and one of them is difficult to kind of illustrate in this game mode so I'll wait for uh, World Boss to illustrate it to you guys uh, but it's her defensive capabilities. On top of being a decent probably the best universal supervillain female, let's, let's specify here which type I'm talking about. Uh, she's also decent defensively. Now, she's not going to be as good for PvP in one-on-one -on -one situations the way that Dr. Doom is, and he's not even that good if you kind of refer to my videos and some of the frustrations, but um, he or she uh, obviously also makes a good combo for Dr. Doom. I actually just goofed up the proc there, um, but she is decent on her own in uh, world boss situations because of her... her fantastic defense, and that would be against the likes of characters, don't get stunned, like uh, Thanos, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys later. Um, but the basic idea is to proc on the second skill, and I'm obviously not doing that right now, and that's why my score is horrendous, um, and then use the fourth skill for the buffs, and then use the third skill to help you time your procs a little bit better. The first skill is not used because it just doesn't do very much, and it's not an iframe, so it just well, it does do some damage, it does leave you open, and it doesn't kind of help out with your timing. That's about 100k off my score. I probably could have pushed a little bit higher than 715. I probably could have gone to about 750. But she is definitely above, a cut above Morgan Le Fay. This 604 was a, a pretty bad run, and that 604 is better than my best score with Morgan Le Fay of about 580. Um, and now if we compare their builds, it becomes quite... Uh, obvious which one is better in the long run. Now, of course, I know Victorious is much more expensive than Morgan Le Fay, but it is a good comparison because they both came out recently, they're both tied to Doctor Doom, and they're both universal female villains. Now, in Victorious's cases, she's level 64. I just don't have enough resources to push her. I mean, I have resources, but I don't want to spend them to push her all the way to 70 because of Doctor Doom and Johnny and a bunch of other characters. Uh, I put her first and her last gear to 22 to, bo to boost her attack and to try to boost her uh, ignore defense and cooldown to get them close enough to 50%. Uh, the skills, or the, sorry, the Uru is HP and crit rate, trying to max those out in addition to some ignore defense. The skills we really want to level up and max out for, as well as her passive. You can level up her her uh, passive last resort and then also her cosmic javelin skill because of that crazy buff you see there 60% all attack 60% all defense 20% all speed for the ISO weight set it's only a stage 6 power of angry hulk but this is the best set for her for things like ABX I know it's quite confusing because we talked about her before her uh, damage is a percentage of her HP but mm, 
Members of my alliance did further testing and it appears that while the initial hit or part of the hits are dealing HP damage, the rest of them are dealing energy. So the fact that you have this and it has an all attack boost is actually improving her score in the long run, at least for ABX. So I know it's, it's kind of weird, but yeah, this is the best set for her. Eight HP ISOs is not best. Uh, drastic density would be best for PvP, so that's why I kept both. I actually opened up a second slot, but this is the ideal set for her for PvE content for Alliance Battle, ex or yeah, Alliance Battle Extreme. For the Obelisk, it's a 180% CTP of energy. There's a bit of uh, kind of inefficiency with the crit damage because it's very high. It's 42. She doesn't need that much crit. I'm capped by 10%, so you could get a CTP with a much lower crit damage roll, which people might say is bad. But you could give it to her and it would be totally fine because her tier 2 passive Herald of Doom gives her 30% crit damage increase. Now that 30% chance to increase crit damage by 100%, I think that one stacks above 200% up to 300%. And that's why if you noticed on the ABX run for some of her skills, the number had a little kind of um, action thing, this little like pointy almost like the punch animation in uh, the old Adam West Batman shows where it's like Biff, pow, that kind of uh, squiggly uh, kind of animation or drawing or I don't know what you call it, a web, a bubble. Uh, it's like a spiky bubble. Anyways, that's, that, that's partially on the numbers. I think that's implying that there's an additional crit damage bonus going on. But if you compare those builds and those numbers to Morgan Le Fay, Level 70 versus level 64. She's got four and five star Uru as well for energy attack and crit damage. Her skills are mostly level six. Um, her gear is 22 on first and fourth, which is exactly the same as uh, Victorious. She's got a level 12 fully awakened Power of Angry Hulk. Yeah, I kind of over, um, over invested in Morgan Le Fay a little bit. I might have to move some of these over to Victorious. Uh, and then she also has a CTP of energy, and you can see her skills are similarly, not entirely maxed out, but they're similarly close in terms of how, you know, maxed out she is um, versus Victorious. But Victorious is obviously doing better. Um, but the build involves a mixture of HP and energy attack or all attack in the case of Power of Angry Hulk. But it does set her up in an interesting way because you're still overvaluing HP. Uh, but on top of that, you look at her fourth skill, Impending Victory, gives her a shield that is 35% of her max HP for 10 seconds. Uh, and you can refresh that because it's only a 7.5 second cooldown on the ability, and it gives her 60% damage reduction. So basically, what I was saying before, which I wasn't really saying very clearly, is that she has very cool skills and very valuable skills for PvE despite the fact that she only has four skills and despite the fact that she doesn't do a lot of damage. Well, she doesn't do a lot of damage right now. Basically, her, her second skill is the only skill that does reasonable damage and it has all defense down, which is great. Um, she has a lot of weapons that make her potentially very good for PvE. I mean, this right here is great for PvE. Guaranteed dodge, crit damage, bonus crit damage. Last resort gives her 60% guaranteed crit rate uh, and penetration, which is also good for PvE. But then in Pending Doom, you have a 35% max HP shield that's up 24-7, but the entire fight because you're manually casting it. She also has a 100% increase in max HP, which doubles your HP, which therefore also doubles your shield shield, um, which is basically it equals 70% of your max HP technically, and then it also has, she also has a 60% damage reduction all the time. So those three abilities make her incredibly tanky, and if there were ever to be a uniform for this character, some sort of, you know, bonus uh, buff that, that came out, and I'm going to test her here against Thanos with just her leadership, Wasp for the extra HP and the debuff, and then Ghost Panther. Uh, and then these strikers. I want to show you just how tanky she is. And despite the fact that I'm basically face tanking Thanos, uh, she can get very close to dying. But as long as Thanos doesn't penetrate that shield, as long as you dodge the purple attacks, he basically can't really kill her unless you make some sort of horrible mistake or you just stand still for a, a, a long period of time. Uh, now, I'm not going to tell you whether or not she can actually clear this stage for, for her damage, but if you if you watch and you'll see that above her health bar, you might have to look pretty closely to see it, above her health bar, there's this, blue, well, it's, it's gone now, but hang on. Uh, above her health, health bar, there's a blue or kind of baby blue uh, bar, a smaller bar, and that is the shield, and I can basically keep that shield up. 24-7 as long as I'm casting the fifth skill and that shield is basically going to act as a buffer for my HP and that's going to basically absorb damage that I take before I take it 
Whoa, okay, I'm, I'm playing so well, it's lagging the game, boys. Uh, it's going to absorb damage before I take it as long as there's no penetration involved. And for the most part, world bosses uh, and most PvE content doesn't have penetration aside from those purple skills. Uh, and because, like in ABX, you can cancel her second skill, or you can kind of spam her second skill, rather, because it's got such a short cooldown, you can basically have iframes up all for a long portion of the time. And so the guaranteed dodge, plus that crazy, you know, 35% max HP shield, which is 35% of 113, uh, you know, you've got basically 80 to 90% effective HP. So there's another term that I've picked up from, uh, that I'm going to borrow from games like Path of Exile and, and Diablo and stuff like that, if you've ever played those types of games. There's your HP total, and then there's something called your EHP, which is your effective HP, which is your which is how much HP you have when you calculate all of the additional defensive properties that you have, whether it's a shield, whether it's some sort of static healing buff, uh, or something like that. So Deadpool might have a very high, a much higher EHP or effective HP compared to just the, re the, the actual stat because of the fact that he heals so much and so often. And so that, that creates the illusion almost that his HP pool is actually much higher than it is. And it technically is a lot higher in practice. You know, he has 35,000 HP, but you know, we do 10,000 damage, he heals it up in five seconds. So he's, he's got way more than 35,000 if you look at it that way. Um, and Victorious is very much in the same way, uh, and she's built very much the same way as someone like Wolverine or someone like um, Deadpool, except instead of having the healing, she's got a recurring HP shield, and that HP shield is, is basically a heal that just hasn't been triggered yet. Now, of course, if you get interrupted and you can't cast the skill, or if there's penetration, it, it doesn't work, so it's not as good as Deadpool's heal or Wolverine's heal, but it's, it's basically the next best thing. And I really like this kind of design because it does open the door for the future, and it's something that I always like to talk about. More defensive builds in Marvel Future Fight, and the the kind of reintroduction of defense having uh, some sort of impact on the game. And you can see the all defense down from the blue shield that she's applying pretty much all the time, even when the strikers aren't out. Um, but having defense matter for something like an HP shield that recurs on your skills, that could be an effect that a lot of combat characters get. For example, holy crap, a novel idea to make combat characters good while not making them broken or, or completely OP. Um, it could actually work, and it works for someone like Victorious. The fact that she's able to, in part because of an iframe, she did, the, the second skill iframe is a really big reason why she's able to uh, tank Thanos' uh, Thanos' skills. But in addition to that, you're not really seeing her take damage. She's taking damage, but she's constantly healing it back up again because it's being taken from that HP shield. Um, and if you just... Oh, I'm gonna, I might die here, actually. Mm, oh, I did die. Damn. If you had looked on the, the left-hand side for her HP, if you're just watching her HP bar, it's not actually going to go down. It's, it's, it's the HP from her shield that's going down um, rather than the HP from her actual base HP. So that, wasn't, that was probably the worst possible showing I could have given you guys, uh, or one of the worst for Victorious, but it did still illustrate what I wanted. I, just, I could have lasted the full five minutes against Thanos, um, but the point is basically the same. She has very good qualities as a defensive character, and she is now basically the number one character for Universal Female Villain ABX. So if you needed that skill rotation, if you needed that uh, build for her, you now have it. I didn't make the skill rotation, by the way. I have to give a shout out to one of my uh, teammate, teammates in my alliance, uh, Home GN, for uh, coming up with that all by himself. And he did a lot of work for that, so you should give him props, guys. Give him a little clap clap in the comments. Um, but yeah, she is, is a cool kind of two-way character, so I wanted to highlight that in a way that I felt was uh, significant. Not a lot of characters can face tank Thanos for basically three and a half to five minutes and come away with no damage taken. Yeah, I got one-shotted there, I know, but I just got one-shotted because I couldn't move away. He was too close to the corner. Go back and rewatch it. I, I was too close to the, the edge of the battlefield and I couldn't run to the right, which is where I had space to evade those purple lines, and that's exactly what I kept telling you guys, and I didn't take my own advice. Stay away from the penetration, Cynic Alex. Anyways, um, she has very good potential as a two-way character to become even stronger, both for PvE content and possibly for PvP content, if she were to get, you know, additional iframes or a way to heal. I think a way to heal would probably be, um, in a way, awkward because it works against her last resort passive, but it would also help her... Um, stay alive and 
one thing that they could do, which could make the character kind of OP, but they could have her heal up to 50%, but not over. And that's that's the reason why, for now, uh, something like a CTP of Refinement is really bad for her. I actually don't have a CTP of Refinement here to show you guys, but for those of you thinking you want to make her PvP uh, viable with a CTP of Refinement, don't bother. Because if she heals past 50%, I mean, this automatically puts her at 50% every time you cast the skill, but... In the meantime, in between those casts, if you heal and you go up to 51% or higher, then the last resort passive won't kick in. So you won't have that penetration, you won't have that guaranteed crit rate. That might not be the biggest deal, but it does take away one of the character's main aspects, which is I'm going to have this huge HP shield, but my, my base HP is going to be half of what it normally is. So I'm going to have this, this big gap. But if in the future with a uniform or something like that, they gave her an additional uniform effect, which said, you know, below 30%, heal for 20% or whatever, just heal up to 50% and no further, then she could constantly bounce around between basically 1% HP and 50% HP while basically maintaining an additional 35% HP on top. 35% times 1.5 because she's doubling her HP. So that's a really interesting uh, kind of design mechanic. I wanted to highlight it. I know it's a lot of talking to do, but it's, it's worth explaining and it's worth looking out for in future characters. And it's worth mentioning in the hopes that Netmarble can transfer some of these kind of effects, some of these design qualities onto future or existing characters, especially of the combat variety. Some of these characters would be so much better if they had some sort of HP shield that they could call upon every time they casted a skill. It would make their defensive uh, uh, properties a lot more respectable and a lot more valuable, and it would possibly make them much more relevant characters um, without too many more tweaks. Because even if you don't do a lot of damage, if you can survive for a long time, you're at least relevant in things like Alliance Conquest and possibly Timeline Battle. So that is the highlight that I wanted to do of Victorious. It's a little bit complicated, so if you guys are still confused about anything, let me know in the comments down below and I can reiterate. One more time, this, the uh, skill rotation is 4, cancel 2, and then 2, and then 3, cancel 2 when she jumps up into the air at the beginning of the third skill. That's for ABX. For everything else, just spam the second skill and the fourth skill and you'll probably be in a pretty good position to succeed. Let me know what you think of the character. Let me know what you think of the updated build, which focuses on attack and the CTP. Subscribe if you enjoy the content. Hit me up on Twitch for more. Join the Discord. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.